Nino's Italian Restaurant. This was a particularly memorable episode of Kitchen Nightmares, and I'm gonna take a look at what happened to the business after the show, what the owners have been up to, and why there's been some conflict between the owners and Kitchen Nightmares. This episode of Kitchen Nightmares might be one of the funniest episodes of all time. If you don't immediately recognize the episode, I bet there's a good chance you've seen this clip. Just like last night, he ran up to every table and said, hello, my name's Nino. That's definitely one of the more popular memes from the episode, but honestly, I think it's full of meme potential. The restaurant that Gordon is trying to save in this episode is called Nino's Italian Restaurant, and it's revealed at the beginning of the episode that the restaurant has been owned by the same family for 54 years. Unfortunately, Vincenzo, the dad of the family, and the person who was originally helping his wife run the place, has taken a step back from that after being diagnosed with dementia. In order to fill the role of his dad and keep the restaurant afloat, Vincenzo's son Nino was supposed to take over for him along with his brother and sister. Unfortunately, it seems like Nino hasn't really stepped up to the role in the way that he needs to, and is instead just occupying his time with menial tasks like cleaning. Nino's mom, his sister, and his brother are pretty much pitted against him from the start, with all of them blaming part or all of the restaurant's problems on him. My brother Nino is supposed to be the restaurant manager. All I can say is, he's the worst employee here. Nino is a goofy ass man, and I mean that in the best way possible. But before we get to him, let's talk about this guy. This is Nino's brother, Michael. Michael is the funniest guy in the entire episode, and the guy from the aforementioned meme, but we'll get to that later. Michael talks so much trash about Nino and does it in such a trolling way that it's impossible not to laugh. He looks like he would be the manager of a bank or something, but he's funny as hell throughout the whole episode. Before Gordon even shows up, pretty much the entire family rips on Nino and accuses him of being lazy, watching TV during work hours, and having the maturity level of a child. Thinks he owns this place, and it's because his name Nino's. However, my dad has told him, Jack in the Box, the owner no be named Jack. Pick up table six, please. I'm really quite tired. I didn't sleep last night. Terrific, thank you. Nino works here, we pay him, but basically he does very little. He sits in the office and watches TV. Nino of course denies all these accusations and also reveals that his brother and sister were the ones who wanted to be on the Kitchen Nightmares show against his will. And that's how you know things are gonna get interesting when Gordon finally does show up. As per the show's usual formula, Gordon arrives, meets the family, and asks if the food is good. And also per the show's usual formula, everyone gives their food a very high rating. Yeah, I'm sure he'll love it. Then Gordon starts asking about what roles everyone plays in the restaurant, and things immediately fall apart. Nino says he has stepped up to fill the vacancy left by his dad, and pretty much everyone at the damn table starts roasting the life out of him. Nino, the restaurant's named after you. What's your role? I, I get here early, I, I do uh, the remedial things as janitorial, Good. vacuuming. It sounds like you put over a barrel now. It's like everybody's kind of running the restaurant. I thought Nino was running it. <laughs> not really, no. That's not true. He spends a lot of time in the office watching TV. This is not even true. He, he's not it's here not at eight, He's not here at 8 in the morning when I get here. Why would I come here at 8 That's in the a morning fantasy. to I, watch TV? Why wouldn't I just stay there? It's I like get here at 8. Tell people you're working. Because nobody's here so you can say whatever you're doing, right? Stretching the truth. It is not. <laughs> he makes everybody believe he does crap. Just like last night, he ran up to every table and said, Hello, my name's Nino. And this is where the meme comes from. All this is only five minutes after Gordon walks in the door. Nino, of course, denies what everyone is saying about him, and Gordon decides that he needs to go ahead and try the food. But while he's waiting on his food to arrive, he calls over the trash-talking brother Michael to ask some more questions about Nino, and the trash talk starts all over again, which leads to this fucking hilarious scene. My brother's full of shit. I'd be surprised if he worked two hours a day. That's what I'm saying. Why is he not here helping her? He doesn't have another job. Either come here at night or get another job. Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay, Gordon. You know that cliche joke in movies and TV shows where someone's talking shit about someone else, only to turn around and see them right behind them? It actually happens here. The way the camera pans over and everything is comedy gold. Apparently, Nino is pissed off about everyone talking shit about him, so he tries to convince Gordon that he's actually a hard worker, and claims he cleans the whole restaurant regularly. But Gordon, being who he is, reaches under the table, pulls out a piece of old gum, and shows it to Nino, who seems to get more agitated. Just just so. my knees, and just, then I, what is that? It's just stuck to my jeans. Oh my gosh. And I wouldn't do that in your restaurant either. 
Or you wouldn't find gum under my tables. Gordon, apparently not content with absolutely obliterating the man, then goes around the entire restaurant and points out every single obvious spider web and dirty thing that Nino was supposedly cleaning all the time. Nino then leaves and returns with, no joke, fucking physical photographs of him cleaning the restaurant, to which Gordon responds with even more trash talk. But finally, Gordon's food arrives, and to no one's surprise, he says it's terrible. Dreadful. He tries to show Nino what's wrong with it, but Nino refuses to touch it in the dining room for some reason, and things start to get more confrontational. Rice, can you have a word with the chef? I know you're scared of them, but ask him. I'm not scared of them, and I'm not scared of you. What's that supposed to mean? You threatening me? I'm not, a, I'm not a person that's scared, so don't use that word, please. So, are you gonna let me continue eat, or do you wanna, what, do you wanna fight? Like, confrontation? If you're talking about something physical, can you, no. Can you? I am shitting myself. The then chef, you need to wear diapers. The, you shouldn't be shitting on yourself. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Now I know the problem in this restaurant. Yeah. I'm staring uh, at it. And I'm, I'm staring at it as well. This part cracks me up every time I watch it. Nino has this expression like he realizes that the insult he just made makes no sense at all, but he can't back down from the argument, so he's just pretending like it made sense, and Gordon is just sitting there with a confused look on his face. But after that tense standoff, Gordon calls a meeting and absolutely rips Nino and the food to shreds. And the second Gordon leaves the room, Nino starts complaining about how Gordon was out to get him from the start, prompting his family to go on yet another trash-talking spree. I really got the sense that he came in here and I'm his target. He's 100% right. That guy turned his head so fucking fast, I think I heard his neck snap. Next is the part of the show where Gordon watches a typical dinner service, and it's predictably a train wreck. But not only does Nino refuse to hear any criticism, he also hardly does anything. Okay, so Nino just continually stands there, and that's the frustrating thing right now, because I look and he's like in my right peripheral at all times. After Gordon goes through the restaurant's refrigerator and finds several things wrong with it, he gives Nino another ass reaming. But Nino just makes excuses and says he's not allowed to make the necessary changes. So Gordon decides to board out the restaurant and tell Nino that it's closing in order to try and get him to show that he actually cares about making it work. Nino's initial reaction to this news is... Alright. Fine. But after a little bit of prodding from his mom, he does try to talk her into keeping it open. Honestly though, while watching this scene, I can't help but wonder if that reaction was genuine or if Nino just realized what was going on and that he needed to give the right answer. But either way, it seems like the changes to the restaurant are underway and Nino is totally on board with it. So Gordon does the usual restaurant remake and also gives them a new menu which everyone seems to like. For relaunch night, Gordon puts Nino in the kitchen as the expediter. His job is basically to take people's orders and make sure they get out of the kitchen on time. Despite getting a little bit overwhelmed at one point, honestly the guy is doing his damnedest to get things right. Nino's brother Michael on the other hand gets pissed off at every minor mistake Nino makes and pretty much takes the job away from him, which prompts Chef Ramsay to step in and kick Michael out. And after that, everything goes pretty much according to plan, and the episode ends on a relatively upbeat note, except for the fact that Gordon accuses Michael of not wanting to change, which causes him to get pissed and walk out. Lastly, we're left with the narrator explaining that in the weeks following the show, Michael distanced himself from the restaurant, and Nino continued to step up and do the job he was supposed to do. But Nino's mom was apparently still having to work a lot and take care of the day-to-day -day running of the restaurant. To be honest, Nino doesn't really seem like a bad guy to me. He's a little bit combative at the beginning of the episode, but I think anyone would be a little bit defensive if someone showed up and just started criticizing everything you did. Also, honestly from what I saw in the episode, I think Nino's family probably contributes to him not stepping up and taking charge. When he does finally step up in the second half of the episode, his brother just criticizes every tiny mistake he makes and takes away his job from him. So what ended up happening to Nino's? What is Nino up to? Is it still open in 2021? Let's first start with the restaurant itself. I was looking at the restaurant's Yelp reviews and I discovered that Karina Cristiano, the sister of Nino and Michael, had actually responded to several of the reviews. In one of them, she reveals that, we only have two menu items from Chef Ramsay on the menu. Our customers of many years wanted all our menu items back, and this has been the case since December 2012. So it sounds like they pretty much took Chef Ramsay's menu and chucked it in the garbage after he left. The episode aired on February 22nd, 2013, but as best I can tell, it was actually filmed in July of 2012. So they only had the Chef Ramsay menu for about four months before giving up on it. 
We'll come back to the Yelp reviews in a bit. But the next bit of news we have from the restaurant is that sadly, Vincenzo Cristiano, the father of the family, passed away in October of 2014, as evidenced by this article from Press Telegram. But the restaurant is definitely still open for business at this point. But unfortunately, again, the next update that we have about the restaurant is that it's closing down on August 12, 2016, about three years after the airing of the episode. In a quote from another Press Telegram article about the closing, Karina had this to say. We're going to retire, said Karina Cristiano, whose parents founded the restaurant. It's going to be really hard because we were all raised there. I got the impression while watching the episode that a big drive for keeping the restaurant open was that it was something that Vincenzo really cared about. I remember at the beginning of the episode, Inga mentioned that she made a promise to Vincenzo to keep the restaurant going, so maybe after his passing, there wasn't as much reason to keep it open. Or maybe they were losing lots of money and had no choice but to close down. Interestingly, the restaurant has a Facebook page that's still actively posting for some reason. Their last post was on December 6th of 2020, and they posted pictures of what looks to be an anti-lockdown protest along with a message of support for businesses. Other than that, it's just old pictures of the restaurant and their family. Okay, now let's go back to the Yelp reviews. I was really curious about what ordinary people thought about the food while they were open. Gordon Ramsay probably has a higher standard for food than the average person does, or maybe he even exaggerates how bad the food is to make the show more interesting. I wanted to know if regular people liked it and what they thought about it. The overall rating of the restaurant is three stars, which definitely isn't great. Looking through all the reviews, they're pretty much all over the place. Some people say the food's amazing, while others say it's complete shit. Just from scrolling through, I definitely saw a lot of one-star reviews. It's hard to say if people just have different standards for food or if the quality control is horrible. But let's read a few of these and see what people have to say. I'm going to give the abridged version of many of these just to save time, but feel free to pause the video and read the whole thing if you want to. This one from 2013 gives it two stars and says, My fiance and I walked into an empty restaurant. The main dining room was a ghost town. Did I mention this was a 6.30 p.m. on a Friday night? The mozzarella arrives. The sauce was by far the blandest thing I've ever tasted. The mozzarella tasted good though. I had a direct view through the window to watch the kitchen. I see something put in the microwave and my optimism is no more. My lasagna comes out and it's all right. I could have gotten lasagna of a better taste at a local chain restaurant. This one from April 2014 gave them one star and wrote, well, it has been a long time since I've been to the once famous Nino's. Nino's was still the same disappointment it was starting a number of years ago. To be honest, nothing was even good. This three star review from May of 2014 says the parking lot was empty and when I walked in there was only one party of two having dinner I didn't take it as a good sign soup came with my order and I opted for the pasta fagioli it was awful I enjoyed the entree as the pasta was just right this one star review from 2015 says it was the most disappointing restaurant experience we've encountered in a very long time the food was bland and forgettable this one star review also from 2015 says, I don't love the bland lukewarm food. I don't love the slow service. I don't love the dingy gross atmosphere. This place run on half assness. Bletch. This five star review from 2016 said, the food was really fresh and very tasty. And lastly, this one star review is from 2018, a full two years after the restaurant closed. I guess this guy just suddenly remembered that he forgot to write a review. We loved coming here for the basic American style Italian comfort items. We hated the changes made by Kitchen Nightmares. There were obviously many, many more reviews, but after scrolling through them for a long time, I think these are a good sample of the whole bunch. There's a lot of one, two, and three star reviews, and occasionally a five star review. So either their quality control was horrible, or some people have very low standards for food. I've also included some of the pictures of the food that Yelpers took. Whatever lights they had on in the building were definitely giving the food a weird orange look in these pictures that's not doing it any favors. Looking at pictures people took of the interior, it looks extremely dark and moody as well. On the show, it looked way more well lit, but I guess they changed that back as well. And that's pretty much the whole story of the restaurant. Whether they were doing well and decided to close willingly, or whether they had no customers and were forced to close, I guess we'll never know for sure. But based on the Yelp reviews, I would assume the latter. Now let's find out what all the owners have been up to since the restaurant's closing. Let's start with Michael. He was probably the goofiest guy in the family, and he's the one who's actually in the aforementioned meme. He mentioned in the episode that he has his own career, and I was sure that judging by his looks, he was like a bank manager or something. Well, I wasn't too far off. He works for Coldwell Banker as a real estate agent. Check this out. He actually has an introduction video on the Coldwell Banker YouTube channel. Hello there. My name's Nino. For Coastal Alliance. 
I have been assisting buyers and sellers of real estate in the Southern California area since 1983, saving my clients money, time, and drama. Damn it, they turned off the comments. I really wanted to read those. So I guess that's what he's been doing for work since the restaurant's closed. I also found his Facebook and... Oh, no. Yeah. He has several posts that are basically trying to say that asking people to wear a mask is just the worst act of tyranny ever committed, in addition to an absolute fuck ton of right-wing political memes. That is Nancy Pelosi's head photoshopped onto Hitler. Anyways, next let's take a look at Karina. The best I can tell, she owns a company called Heart Driven Purpose. Reading through the literature on their website, it's a bit vague and unclear as to what specifically they do. But I'm pretty sure it's teaching people to use social media for business purposes. She also does quite a lot of activism, especially for helping rescued animals get adopted. I found this Long Beach Post article talking about how she's helped a lot of people adopt pets that needed homes. She also has a ton of stuff about rescuing animals and even raising awareness about human trafficking on her Facebook page. She also participated in a Long Beach dancing competition several years ago called Dancing for Our Stars in order to raise money for charity. Obviously, Dancing for Our Stars is a parody of the highly popular Dancing with the Stars TV show. But now let's talk about some of the conflict between Ninos and Kitchen Nightmares. On December 7, 2018, Karina posted on the Ninos Facebook page an article from Ranker claiming that Kitchen Nightmares is, quote, full of baloney. Just for context, I read that article and it's really just a bunch of vague, not well-supported claims about the show that, in my opinion, they just made to get clicks. But that's a discussion for another time. Let's see what Karina had to say about Kitchen Nightmares. Wish I could have been included in this interviewed piece of the former contestants. Yes, the food is good and in the show he spits it out. The whole filming is done in three days so it's strategically set up to follow their storyline. At one point it was so obviously out of control and staged, the first night I said I would pull the plug, so they slowed it down. A lot of our customers hated his menu and screamed for our recipes back, and we did. All in all, he is a nice person, and yes, it is all a persona for the show. He's good looking and charming, yes, but it wasn't what we were told it would be, and everything they remodeled was cheaply made and broke. Chairs from Ikea? Anyone in the restaurant industry knows we have to have commercial grade chairs for the safety of the customers, so that was a big flop too. Table tops were uneven and a disaster to have people place a drink on top. We had to cut the tables down to remove because so heavy, and it's signed Karina Cristiano. I kind of wonder what specifically she means by it was so obviously out of control and staged. What part specifically was staged? Obviously, I can't attest to whether her claims are true or false. I can only present them to you and let you decide what you think. But either way, Karina clearly wasn't happy with the show afterwards. I can't really tell if the rest of the family agrees with her on that or not because I haven't seen them saying anything about it anywhere. But next, let's talk about Inge Cristiano, Nino's mom. As we can see from this picture that was posted on May 7th, 2020 on Karina's Facebook, she's still around even after reportedly battling cancer twice. Unfortunately, if you read the caption of the post, it looks like the pandemic lockdown has really been taking a toll on her mental health due to the fact that she's been separated from everyone. But as far as we know, she is still alive and in relatively good health. And finally, let's talk about the man himself, Nino. This is the person I was the most curious about, but damn it, wouldn't you know it, I could not find a single social media account or anything about his whereabouts after the show. Where is he? What is he doing for work? How does he feel about the show and his subsequent memehood? Is he still running around telling people, Hi, I'm Nino. But I guess for now, we just don't know. Why is it that the most interesting people from the show always disappear without a single trace afterwards? <sighs> oh well. So I guess that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. All the sources I use are linked down in the video description below. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comment section. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time.